Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Goodcast Show. So today, before I start, I want to paint a bit of a, a picture to what we're going to talk about. Today's topic is a bit serious. It's on addiction. Uh, now, in Malaysia recently, there's been reports that we estimated we have one million drug addicts in the country. Uh, another shocking result is a uh, shocking statistic is that in 2023, there were over 20 to 30 thousand arrests uh, related to drug. Uh, issues and majority of them were actually drug addicts. Now, sadly though, our approach to drug addiction is uh, quite stunted in the sense that only one out of eight drug addicts are actually uh, accessible to treatments. So today to discuss about this, I have the perfect person. I stalked her on Instagram and I found her and she made the trip, a one hour journey from Kota Kamuning here. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, she's she's an inspiring story. She herself is a recovering uh, addict. Uh, in her younger years, but she turned her life around. She became an interventionist, a coach. She's a certified recovery specialist, a certified recovery support coach, an international certified prevention associate. She's also the co-founder of Hope Valley, which is one of Malaysia's rehabilitation outpatient uh, centers. And uh, her name is Suhaika Sharif M. Sharif, or better known as Ika Sharif. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making the trip. I know we've been talking a while. Um, I'm very passionate about this topic and I and uh, I always started this podcast with the idea of wanting to talk about issues that people may not want to talk about, right? I, I call this the people's podcast. So we talk about the people issues. I respect that. Yeah, thank you. And by the way, one thing I failed to, I forgot to mention, she's also a music producer and she was just dropping some names. She has worked with uh, Joe Flizzo, Malik, uh, Too Fat as we know them in the past and also Inuendo. Come on, man. Any other names you've worked with? Who have you worked with? Oh no, I can't think on the spot, oh, but yeah, right. so many others. Um, yeah, I've worked with Shafinas. Um, okay. Yeah, I was in the same company with Ama Izan Omar and okay. Paul Moss. Yes. Yeah, so they were my mentors. Wow, <laughs> my goodness, my goodness. I, I, I love it. Uh, I always see the music producer lifestyle on TV and I, is it the same? Is it late night recordings and uh, long hours and... Back then, yes, yes, then, yes. yes. They are now... Depends on the project. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My goodness. <laughs> Fantastic. Now let's get to, to you first. Yes. I want to discuss about your history with uh, drug addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been very vocal about it. You've spoken in Rotary. You've, you've spoken in many platforms and are sharing your amazing story. Uh, but I've, I've always wanted uh, under, I mean, I wanted to understand this from your perspective. Being an addict uh, in your youth, you know, I'm sure you also talk about the hardship it caused your mother, by yeah. the way, right? Your family and all that. And um, as a result of your substance abuse. Now, my question is, looking back now from where you are now, you're successful, you you help people, you have purpose, you, you're, a, you're a beacon of hope for so many. Um, what was the reason behind your addiction? I would say a few factors contributed to it. Oh, okay. um, um, one of them could be um, losing a father at young age. Okay. Yeah, and growing up probably, um, the I experienced emotional neglect. Mm. Yes. So yes, that could be some of the reasons. Causes. Huh? Yes. Um, okay. Maybe a sex uh, sex abuse as well. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you went through all of that, and yes. then you turned to okay. Uh, my goodness. Um, I would add more if I could, like yeah, low self esteem. Do. You know, uh, this is my story. I always share. Um, primary school, top student, doing oh, great. You okay. know, thinking I'm all that. <laughs> okay. Secondary school, didn't was not put in the best class because my UPSR, I didn't get all A's. I was okay. aiming for the best. You know, okay. uh, boarding school, and then I didn't get in. Fine, okay. settled for a normal school, which okay. was a good school, and I was not put in the best class, and okay. that really affected my self esteem. And okay. from then on, I was not interested in studying anymore okay yeah. what was your UPSR results by the way all A's I said one C C one for Karangan <laughs> until today I'm like what did I do wrong <laughs> I got yeah. four A's one B yeah, go. my mom was not happy so why couldn't you get the other A anyway <laughs> now during addiction um, because I have seen uh, first hand you know people who uh, mostly in the, in the experience I've had was more to alcohol abuse yes. that was the big thing but what were your dark, darkest moments during your time when you were an addict? Can you remember any specific moment that you thought, well, this is really bad. I've hit rock bottom. Oh, so many, I have to say. I've reached so many rock bottoms. Um, sometimes you need multiple to mm. actually wake you up kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. So if I have to share a few, I guess um, some would be, one of them would be when I was experiencing psychosis. Oh, wow. That's a very scary place to be. Okay. Because you actually believe whatever you're thinking. One, It was... I used to think that uh, they had hidden cameras in my room watching wow. me using. So I'll be like, you know, hiding in a corner to that extent already. It was 
pretty bad. Okay. And I was um, used to be suspicious of my partners every time that they're cheating on me. So that was my main trigger. Okay. Love addiction, a different okay. topic. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. One, yeah. So my partners will always be my main trigger as well. Okay. It's cheating on me. So I'll be so obsessed in spying on them. So the minute uh, husband goes to sleep, I will take his phone and I will download everything I can and I will install spy apps and I'll be obsessed with it. And I'm only like this when I put substance in my system. Okay. You know, when there's no substance, I'm like, hey, okay, everything's kind of okay. okay. Kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. What sort of spy apps? Maybe. Oh, you no. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I'm telling you that one was pretty crazy to the yeah. point that I can even record his calls. Uh, his, I can turn on his uh, recording while mm. he's driving or wherever he's at. Like turn on the camera and audio recording and forward all his messages. It's insane. My goodness. Yes, the things yes. you can do. Yes. And My I head. hardly find anything. It's just mainly it was all in It my was head. in your head. Yeah. Now, let's... Then after hitting these rock bottoms, you decided to make a U-turn. You talk about one day you decided, you know, that's enough. What was that particular moment that made you go, you know what, I'm done with this? I get asked this question many times. Like if I have to pick one, I think it has to be the time when, you know, you, mind you, at this point, I've lost everything. You know, I, I had uh, uh, lost my job. Um, friends were giving up on me. My family, like brothers, who I'm very close to, and my stepdad were like, like, oh no, no hope. Mm. But the only one but who didn't give up on me was my mom. Mm. And she came to a point where there was one day she touched my head and she said, oh, my poor daughter. She walked away. It was the first time she didn't stop wanting to rescue or save Ika. Mm. That's when I realized, oh my God, if mom gives up on me, mm. I'm, excuse me, but I'm screwed. Like, yeah. I don't know if I can. You can, you can curse. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, what am I going to do? So that was my turning point. I'm, I'm not long after that, I called her. I said, okay, mom, I'm ready to go rehab now. Okay. Mm. Wow, fantastic. And and when you did end up going to rehab um, and, and then coming out of it and coming out of your addiction, how did that feel? Um, scary, I have to say. Okay. Because, you know, I've, I, I spent two months in inpatient treatment mm. and coming out was like, I don't know if I can stay in recovery. Okay. But I, all I know is that I'm going to do whatever it takes to stay in recovery because I've come to that point. Okay. A lot of people don't get that because some of them are being forced to treatment yeah. they're not ready or they come out a bit overconfident mm. so in my case i was really scared so i was really committed to continuing my program which wow. i did wow. so for the first year i was attending five six uh, support group meetings uh, okay. daily for the first year okay. a week five six days a week wow. <laughs> sometimes i will even arrive two three hours before the meeting starts just to make sure that i'm in a safe place kind of deal okay okay <laughs> yes Wow. So you, you, you've also, I've, I've heard you talk about uh, in some, some interviews, you said recovery is awesome. Recovery is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> don't amazing. make me cry. No, no, no. no. I, I don't. We, yeah, we, we, we have ran out of tissues. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the best gift ever. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful to my higher power for yeah, giving yeah. me this disease. And I would not be where I am today yeah. to experience this freedom, this serenity this peace and you know i'm yeah. not saying life is perfect yeah, <laughs> life, is still life. Yeah, yeah, life is still alive <laughs> yes, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah especially being a mom yeah, recently yeah, yeah, and yeah. you Congrats know oh my that. god I being a mom picture. was tough yeah. <laughs> it's tough it is it is it is it is it is it is so right. yeah it's, it's it's worth it it was worth it i mean uh treatment is not cheap as well depending where you go um i went to a high-end treatment facility and we're talking about they were charging us dollars like really expensive my goodness. But was it worth it? I'm talking about the first month was my five years savings alone. Mm -mm -mm. Was wow. It? Yeah. Uh, can I mention the price? No, no, or? you can. You can yeah, say whatever I mean, you want. At uh, that time, they were charging 15,000 USD a month. A month? A month. Who makes that kind of money, right? <laughs> so I'm, I begged them. I was so desperate to want to go, right? Because the other treatment fac facilities, I feel, was not for me in terms of, um, I don't know, um, it was... I, I don't want to say anything bad. Sorry, you can cut this piece. <laughs> yeah. Um, where was I? Yeah, 15,000. Uh, oh my God. 15,000 15, USD a yeah, month. Yeah. And I begged them. I called them, please, I really need to be there. Um, but I can't afford this price. Please give me a discount. You know, I'm willing to clean the toilet. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, do it, the dishes or whatever. Then they give me a discount. I think about 9,000 or 10,000 kind okay. of deal. Okay. I don't even know if I can just My this. goodness. Yeah, and second month was cheaper, but uh. second month I couldn't pay anymore. So that My means parents paid for me. Yeah. How, how long was your rehab? Two. Two months. Yeah. Some people may need longer. Yeah, but oh. that's not the price today. Yeah. If things has changed, now okay. it's in ringgit. Okay. And it's still 
to some people it's still not cheap lah. Yeah. It depends. So yeah, there are cheaper option, options. Okay. There are free options as well. There so are free options. Yes, which is a support group. We're talking about Alcoholics Anonymous, uh-huh. Narcotics Anonymous. It works. It works. So huh? to me, when someone comes to me, I can afford this price or I can, if they, they can afford the high end, then of course I refer them or work with us or whatever. We are mm. middle. Mm. Um, if they can't, I'm giving them the other options. Like, you know, Pengasih. Pengasih mm. is affordable. Yeah. Mm. And or support group. Free. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, it's it's good to know that there are free options and the more accessible course, options, right? I mean, course. not everyone can afford fifteen thousand exactly, USD per month. But coming back to my point, was it worth it? Hundred mm. percent. Okay. Because we have to change the thinking. Because some of these alcoholics, for example, mm. they go out one night. How much do they spend a night? We're looking at two grand easily. Some if mm. they're going on a binge mm-hmm. with you know extra mm-hmm. maybe sex or karaoke or mm-hmm. drugs or whatever, mm-hmm. we easily they can spend two thousand a yeah, night. Yeah. yeah. And this is something we're asking them, okay, maybe, for example, Hope Valley, we're asking for three, four thousand, something that could promise you, could save your life, and you don't want. You don't want. You know, we have to change that, that, mm-hmm. that thinking. Yeah, because yeah, I was one of them. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Now, I want to go into addiction now yes. uh, and understand it more as a condition because I think people have in Malaysia tend to compartmentalize addiction as a criminal offense, yes. as a... Um, As, as you said it in one um, interview, I, I, which I completely agree, which I'll touch on soon, but you said that back then, even I remember this, especially, I think this was during Tun Mahathe time as PM, and we had a very big uh, anti-Dada campaign. Mm-hmm. You had posters that could fit uh, album covers for death metal bands, you know, <laughs> The Hands and Dada Musso, you know. I remember, you know, we had yes. so many songs yes. and all the jingles yes. and all that. So I think people have grown up with that perception of addiction when mm. actually it's just, I, I look at it as, Perhaps it's just a, a wrong turn. It's just a mistake that should not define one's life. I don't think it should. It's just a mistake. We and and we should go out there to help them. And so that's why I want to get into this to mm-hmm. paint a different picture for addiction, yes. right? Thank you so My much. My first for thing. Your part. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, is addiction a psychological condition or is it a physiological condition? Psychological. Uh, psychological. So addiction is always related to the brain. The brain. definition of addiction is a chronic brain relapsing disease, mm. uh, continuous of use despite negative consequences. Okay. Yeah, that's the definition. It's, it's, it's chronic. Okay. Um, it's a chronic it's almost, Relapse is almost inevitable when it okay. comes to this addiction. Okay. Just like any other diseases. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like cancer and all that. It'll it comes come, back, right? Yeah, it comes back. Yeah. So what do you do? You have to manage the disease, correct? Mm, 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 mm. It's the same thing. Same thing. Mm. Now, uh, I mean, like, like for me personally, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I can, I, I will label myself as a social drinker, social mm. guy, social guy. But of course, not because I'm a parent, so I don't have time to be social. <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 my children take up all my time. Um, but being you, I mean, I was surprised when I went through your website, Hope Valley, and mm. uh, the list of addictions. Uh-huh. We, we always think addictions is just uh, substance basically, but you have habits, you have thought addictions, mm-hmm. you have people addictions. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my favorite topic, but today we're not covering that, right? <laughs> no, we can, we can. I mean, if that's a great topic. But, you know, so many. So I, I just want to understand, uh, you know, uh, is there a specific personality type that is prone to becoming an addict? No. So I let me explain the Please cause do. of addiction. So the cause of addiction is 40 to 60% genetics, 40 to 60 percent external environment. So when I say genetics, it means you either got it from your parents or your grandparents or your aunt or what. So it's, it's biology, is that the word? Yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Gen- genes. Genes, yeah. Um, exter- hereditary, hereditary. Yeah. Hereditary. Yeah. Um, external environment may include any form of trauma mm. or any form of physical, emotional, sexual, spiritual abuse and or neglect. Mm. Yeah, could be bullying as well mm. because it's external things. So mm. with the genes alone, the addiction will not be triggered. Mm. That's why you'd be surprised that some people probably start their addiction at 40, for example, mm. you know, and some probably at 10 mm. or 15. So it's, you need a combination of both okay. for the addiction to, to happen. Surface. Yeah. Okay. So it's more <laughs> external factors that are causing it then? Both. 40 both. To 40 to 60% each. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Now, w- one thing about addiction, uh, for example, mm-hmm. I, I think for this discussion, I, I wanted to hone down on maybe just a few because we can't touch everything. Yes, of Unfortunately. Course. Yes. But no one of the things that I think I've seen is, of course, substance abuse is a big problem now, mm-hmm. right? Especially it, it, uh, being a parent myself, even you, you know, it's it's sad to see that. Now, I think in 2023, they said that 65% of drug cases were actually uh, young people, youth mm. of Malaysia. And this is sad because they are our future. Yeah. Now, 
I've also seen things like gambling, mm. right? These addictions, right? And how it can destroy your family. Mm-hmm. I've seen cases where children have to work to pay off their father's debt. I've seen cases where, you know, the children are just left and the parents are gambling and they are just mm. neglected, you know, mm. for days even. Mm. Um, and and even alcoholics, you know, I I, I remember the, 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 there was recently a case I was reading online, uh, you know, as I was doing research for this, where this wife just said, you know what, my, my I, I, I can't be with him, he's violent. He, or he drinks and he just doesn't contribute. It destroys families. Children grow up seeing this, right? I'm sure that as an addict, when you are in that, you should, you, you, you probably would know the impact that you're causing your family, right? You would know the devastation you're causing your people around you. Why can't they stop themselves? I love that question. They would, my one-liner answer to that would be, they would if they could. Okay. So coming back to the definition, yeah. it, um, it's a chronic brain disease. Yeah. You're born with the disease. It's like you're telling someone, hey, don't have cancer, snap out of cancer. Don't have heart disease, snap out of it. Mm. We, we are powerless when it comes to our addiction. Mm. And sometimes you need to ask, you don't ask why the gambling, you don't ask why the alcohol, why the substances. You mm. ask, what's the pain? What is the substances, substance, substances doing to make that person not able to stop? Mm. For example, mm. yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? It does make yeah. sense. Yeah. And coming back to gambling, gambling activity addiction, mm-hmm. right? Or mm-hmm. people addiction. Yeah. yeah. This, this two, uh, these categories are a bit more special compared to substance. Okay. Substances, you is something external. You take and you put, right? Mm. So if you're getting sober, you you just stop taking them. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to sex or love addiction or gambling, for example, we call it a behavioral mm. process addiction. Mm. So it's like an alcoholic trying to quit alcohol, and yet alcohol is chained to his body. Mm. You get that picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, food, for example, mm. or this is something people should talk more, because I think that once upon a time, Malaysia was one of the highest rate uh, for obesity, I think. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. the fattest country in the world. So the, the yeah. thinking here is if I'm overweight, mm. I just need to remove the food, go for liposuction, I'm healed. No. no, we need to go to the root of the addiction. You saw the tree, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, you don't cut off the addiction, the, the tree, right? Don't yeah, cut yeah, off the correct, branches. Correct. You need to go to the root, those trauma, those abuse, those neglect. Okay. You need to heal that part. Okay. So how do you get a healthy tree? How do you get a healthy tree? By giving it the right nutrients and... Right, yeah, yeah, um, fertilizer, yeah. fertilizer, sun, yeah, um, water. Yeah. So you focus on the root. So yeah. that's the same picture for addiction as well. But yes. One thing about gambling, <clears throat> and this is something unique about gambling, uh, is that I've seen the cases where people go out of their way to get the money to gamble, yeah. right? Uh, even there was a very famous uh, influencer, I think a few years back, mm-hmm. who was, uh, there was a, a Chinese influencer who actually started uh, scamming her followers, uh, started borrowing money from family, friends, from loan sharks. Then she was beaten up actually in public uh, oh. by, by these some people. Oh. I, 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 the assumption is that allegedly it's a tie to her debt. But, and now when you see her from this beautiful young girl, now she's just, you know, like, you know, gone by that, right? I mean, even that, mm. they know that if they go and get this money, do, don't, do they know internally that, look, if, if I'm going to get this money, I'm still going to gamble it off and I'm still going to come back? Okay, that, I mean, are back they to aware? They're, oh, they're aware, but they, are, they have no control. No control. So I'll give you an example. When I was, um, when I was uh, abusing substances myself, right? Mm. There are days where I do not want to go out and get my substance. There are days where I'm calling my dealer, right? Please don't pick up. Please don't pick up. Please don't pick up. Mm. But at the same time, my hand is going towards it because that, that's the only way I know how to survive. That's the only way I know how to function. Okay. So when it comes to gambling, is they get a high when they, when they are winning. Mm. So that high gives them that, uh, what's the word? The reward system. Oh, uh, but it's, that, an, that it's an instant, yeah. uh, it's to the brain again, yeah, it comes yeah. back to the brain, brain right? Yeah. It's an instant, uh, instant gratification yeah, or something yeah, you yeah. call it, but yeah. it's not long lasting because the pain underneath that all that, remember the root of the yeah, tree yeah. is not resolved. So this external thing, whether it's gambling or alcohol or whatnot, is easing that part. Okay. But it's only temporary, it's not long term. All right, all right. So the longer you do it, for example, gambling, you start off probably harmless with just online an gambling and all app or yeah, small yeah, yeah, one, yeah, but yeah. it gets bigger, right? Yeah, yeah, the more yeah. you do it, the higher tolerance. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like drugs. You just switch it. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. when you develop a tolerance towards it, you just need more and more and more and more. And when does it ever stop? 
Okay. But they are powerless. They are aware of the negative consequences. You think addicts are doing it? Yeah, I'm having fun. I just want to party. No. Okay. You think they come back feeling happy after that? No. It's more coming back to feeling shame and guilt and, you know. So, and, so what you're saying is basically, if, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, is that yeah. addiction, uh, because I, I, I always had this question in my head, whether is it caused by, is it like quicksand? Where you step in it by your first mm. foray into, say, maybe taking a pill or gambling mm. for the first time, mm-hmm. and then it slowly sucks you in, yeah. or is it a, a sort of putting a blanket over uh, an existing issue? So it's basically the latter. It's 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 trying to solve an inner mm. issue or silence it by mm. putting on gambling, taking substances in a way. Yes. In a way yeah? And and the consequences of that will be that one going to the quicksand. Yeah. So it's both basically. <laughs> yeah. Slowly get sucked in. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Now I. I was reading some statistics uh, and uh, apparently in Malaysia, uh, this was in 2022, when they look at the data on substance addiction, uh, they see that the cases are predominantly male, 94.9% and of Bumiputra descent, 87.5%. Now, I mean, of course, I, addiction is, 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 is gender blind and, and, and is color blind, definitely, right? Yes. But what, why do you think this is almost severe, almost entirely a male issue? Mm. And and of course, why is it only uh, mostly the Bumi Putra Bumi community? Bumi Putra. Why? Do you know why? No, I, 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 I thought you could share your input on that. I would say uh, the question is where you're getting this uh, this uh, research. Oh, so from. so yeah. so this was from 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 a news article in the Star. It was yeah. released by ADK. Yes. ADK, A- ADK, yes. ADK, yeah, yeah. ADK research. Um, you have to understand, not everyone gets caught under ADK. Okay. So the research may not be. Fully accurate, but okay. coming back, or maybe you can cut that. Well, I don't want to look, them to look bad. No, 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 yeah. no, okay. no, no, no. Um, no, because actually they said the same thing as what you said. So in that okay. same article, what well, they said that they project that they estimate one million addicts in mm, Malaysia, mm. but so far they've only found a few. Yes. So they are but also they are doing their you. best. They're, they're doing their best. They're, they're yeah. really doing their best because yeah. when we open a treatment facility now, they, they they request for us to all send our reports as well okay. on the clients okay. we worked yeah. on. Okay. So they want to collect yeah, as much data yeah. as they can, but not everyone gets caught. Exactly. So yeah. when you say Bumi Putra, my guess would be only a certain socio-economic status are being mm-hmm. not really targeted, but in a way, yeah. Okay, okay. So when I was coming to recovery, a lot of people asked me, oh my God, you've been doing this for what, 20 years? You never got caught? I'm like, mm. no. Mm, 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 How, I guess what part of this is lucky. Second part, probably, I'm not the main suspect. Suspect. Mm, mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, Even yeah. going for treatment. Usually you send the boys. Yeah, the yeah. girls, you okay, sweep their problem down under the carpet yeah, and yeah. just marry her off kind of deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. it does, it does. Now, another thing that I, I find very peculiar is when we talk about substance abuse, the focus almost entirely goes to synthetic drugs, right? Like, like your, your, I think you were talking about it, you know, like you, you got your, uh, I mean, there are many drugs like cocaine, heroin, you know, mm-hmm. meth- mm-hmm. Met- methamphetamines mm-hmm. and all these kind of things. Mm-hmm. But one drug that I am surprised why it's sort of gone below the radar is alcohol. <laughs> alcohol is something that's even celebrated people wait for the Fridays ah TGIM let's go to the yeah. bar we drink you know <laughs> celebrations we drink we drink we drink mm-hmm. and it's sort of like the thing like the it's like um, like those fire d- during our caveman times where we, it brings people together mm-hmm. we have fun cheers and all that kind <laughs> of stuff although we are ingesting an addictive substance Mm-hmm. Right, uh, and apparently, I was doing some research as well. They said in Malaysia, forty-five point eight percent of Malaysians consume excessive amounts of alcohol, <laughs> which is higher than the twenty percent reported binge drinkers in the United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Malaysia, yeah, right? Malaysia, not bad. We're ahead. <laughs> so, how, in your opinion, in, in in your experience in this field, how dangerous is alcohol as a substance? Oh, much more dangerous because it's easily accessible. It's legal. It's legal. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. it's harder for them to come to the terms that, uh, to the conclusion or um, to come with terms that, hey, what, what am I doing wrong? Everybody's doing it. There's nothing wrong with mm-hmm. alcohol. Mm. And that's the truth, actually. There's nothing wrong with the substances. There's nothing wrong with alcohol. Okay, the substances, yes, of course, it's illegal, right? But we're talking about there's nothing wrong with sex and love or gambling or, or what's the other one? Um, alcohol. Yeah. But the problem is the addiction. So the, a lot of people can drink or binge, even binge drinking yeah, 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 for yeah, that matter yeah, yeah. And, and still lead a normal life. Okay. So they go out binge drinking on Saturday night. Okay, Sunday, done. Yeah, Monday, yeah. I'm going back to work. But an alcoholic of my type or an addict of my type, okay, I'm just going to do Friday night. 
Yeah, I'm going to recover it tomorrow. Sat- tomorrow, right? Saturday comes. Um, no, no, one more day, one more day, one mm. more day. Mm. Sunday comes. It's the same cycle. I'm not able to put it down. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How how does alcohol addiction look like? Same as the rest. When, same when as you the rest. ask, what does it look like? Like in your physical? How, how, oh, how does physical? It, how does yes, it, I have to say manifest? certain substances, certain alcohol, for example can be more taxing on the physical side. For example, alcohol maybe will lead to liver, mm, liver failure and, all, and yeah. all that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So certain substances can affect your body worse than others. For mm. example, meth and cocaine is more of a Brain psychosis. Thing. Okay. Um, ketamine, oh, it's really bad. Yeah, I've, I've dealt with so many ketamine users and, you yeah. know, it's so hard for them to quit as well. And this one affects their, um, what do you call that? Um, urinary oh, okay. and all uh, yeah okay. bowels and all yeah that. it has more <laughs> it's more dangerous for the body okay in that terms yeah okay but alcohol yeah it's pretty bad when you abuse it long term and it can also lead to psychosis as well it can yes yeah delirium I, I, what's the word I can't yeah delirium yeah. Yeah. yeah delirium okay okay because I've always wondered why don't people talk about alcohol it's it's, yeah, uh, it's because it seems harmless harmless right? yeah it's just like you know, a couple just, of drinks yeah. I want to let loose yeah yeah but again there's nothing wrong with alcohol The thing is, we're talking here. What uh, certain people just cannot touch alcohol because mm. once they do, the yeah. addiction be activated. There comes the consequences. Correct. Mm. Now let's talk about um, you know uh, uh, approach to addiction. I think that's something also you talked about. Okay. You know, I, and 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 I shared a story with you. Um, I think you saw it earlier, where a a, a family friend uh, was found dead in her room. Uh, mm. She. She she took her own life, and when more when 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 much more digging was done, it was found that because she had debt thanks to gambling, right? She borrowed for money and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was shocking. Young girl, very young girl, very young girl, promising future. Now, what what I feel is the sad part here is that if only she had spoken to someone, things would have turned out differently, yeah. right? Sometimes I think when you are in the thick of your problem or the, 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 the issue that you're facing, you tend to forget that maybe it's not as tough as you think. Mm. Maybe with different perspectives, it's mm. easier. I'll give you another example as well. I had a family relative who was facing addiction as well. She was, she was sent to rehab and all that. But people approached it from a very, oh, I, I, let's not talk about this. When I think these are the times when the family should <laughs> huddle together and put her in the middle and say, okay, let's talk what's, what's going on. You know, sometimes, because like what you say, the problem is not the substance, it's the reason why there is a need to abuse that substance, mm. right? And that was not done. But thank God she's recovered. She's, she's now uh, really? also fantastic. Yeah. But I, I just want to understand from you, what do you think we should do? I mean, but, but, but then before I get into that, and mm-hmm. I think one of the reasons why this is the case where people are apprehensive about coming out in the open, coming out of the woodwork, mm-hmm. is because the way we look at it. The stigma. Stigma. There is a stigma. <laughs> you know, you think of it as it's a crime. You, 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 you're, 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 you're the trash of society. I think mm-hmm. you mentioned oh, yeah. that as well. And, uh, you know, and so, so this stops them from, from raising. And one good point that you brought up, which I truly agree with, is that when you think in your mind that you are trash, you will lead, To even more destructive habits because you have you you are a person of no value, right? Why go on? Why Might go as well on? just surrender to this and just yeah. I'm, I'm trash anyway, right? I, I've I've no higher benchmark to hit. I, I you know just just do this. What do you think we should do as a society to change our perception to this condition so that we in the future open our arms and look at this as just another problem that we can help solve? This is a great start. What you're doing here? Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just need to make more noise on addiction. Okay. Just need to share more about the reality of addiction. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. When there's education um, and awareness, there could be more understanding and empathy mm-hmm. instead of judgment. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes. definitely. But in terms of how we speak, family can support. Family can yeah. support as uh, well. I mean, uh, there's. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, how 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 would a family member like now mm. in in the same situation, perhaps yes. as your mother was? Yes. Um, how 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 should they deal with this situation? Yes. Um, first of all, I would say look out for the signs. Okay. Because some family, some parents may be um, is oblivious the right yeah, yeah, word. They yeah. so caught up in their yeah, lives, they yeah. don't notice what's going on with their loved ones. So yeah. look out for some changes in their children. 
maybe um, losing weight uh. or more isolation or not less communicating or mixing with the wrong crowd. So you must look out for these signs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, have a try and build that connection with yeah, them and yeah. see if they're open to sharing. Okay. And, but if you still, you feel like your loved ones is in denial, but you sense that something's off, then seek professional help. Okay. Mm. And the earlier you get them, the easier to treat the addiction. The best time to treat addiction is 12 to 19 years old. 12 to 19. When they are adolescents. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Before yeah. the brain is developed. Yeah. After, yeah. after that, it's quite hard. Quite and hard. The older, yeah. like it's <laughs> So <laughs> yes. best to get them when they're young. <laughs> now, another shocking, uh, not a shocking, but a worrying thing for me. I'm a parent, like I keep yeah. saying. Um, you know, a parent, like I said earlier, there expected to be 1 million addicts in this country. Mm. 1 million. That's mm -hmm. a huge number. Yes. When our population is only what? I think 32. Yes. So it's a big number. Now, when this problem is already affecting our youth, uh, and when it affects our youth, it affects our future, mm. right? When you, you know, because the youth are our future. What should be the right ab uh, approach that we should take to curtail this problem among our youth? Um, have more um, talk about addiction in school, perhaps. The schools, yeah. yeah do they stuff? do that enough yeah. now? Sorry, I'm not the person to answer uh, okay, that. This okay, is okay, something okay. I need to do research. Okay. But personally, I feel no. <laughs> no, they don't do it enough. Okay. Yes, and not only topic on addiction, probably even sex education. I, I feel like we need to improve on these okay. topics as well. Yeah. I've, I've, I mean, I'm, uh, please share your personal opinion on this because okay. I've heard people tell me this again. They said, you know, we should, we should uh, introduce sex education in schools mm. and all that. But what would we teach? <laughs> That's my question. I'm like, what do you teach these That's kids? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. Basically, based on basic. Yeah, I'm not an expert in no, this. No, no, it's okay? fine. Yeah, your um, personal opinion. Basic, like consent. Like, you oh, know. Okay. okay. I'm telling you about my. This is my observation. Okay. So many of my clients, right? I would say 80, 90 percent has um um experienced bullying. Bullying is another topic on its own. Yeah, um, yeah. Should be addressed as well. Yeah. And uh, sex abuse. So we're talking male and female. And for many years, after I started coming out, a lot of people are uh, reaching out to me and saying, hey, you know what? I've been dealing with this and I had no one to talk to about this. So imagine from a young age, they had to deal with the sex abuse until they were in their 40s with no family support, nothing. Okay. Yeah. But I have to say we've improved. Like um, I, we get a, couple, a few 20 year old clients and I'm so impressed that when they come to us, they already have their own psychiatrists and therapists. I'm like, wow. Okay. Not my generation. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. Our, I yeah, don't in our term, yeah, we right? never, never, never. Yeah, but no nowadays they're more exposed thanks to, I don't know, social media and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They actually take that step. Sometimes parents don't even know because parents um, are not well-versed in this. They don't believe in this. Mm. So the, these children, uh, not children, um, 20, teenagers, 20, uh, 20, young adults, young adults. Yeah, young yeah. adults, yeah. yeah are going, taking the steps themselves, mm. which is good, actually. Yeah, it's good. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I, I, I think it's a very good thing. But parents, again, come back, coming back to your question, parents need to be educated from our education. It can come yes. understanding and so on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Education is key to solve this matter. Because one thing that I also noticed in the statistics that they talk about the drug addicts in Malaysia is that majority of them only finish secondary school. Mm. And the second, the, the mm. and the second because high, high, high school education is primary school, mm. so education seems to be a key player here. It mm. could have an impact as yeah, well. Yeah. Okay. Now, m moving to our national anti drug agency AADK directors general Sutekno Su Ahmad Bellon said, prevention is better than cure, and it needs to start at home, and the family should protect their children. So you gave your input just now on how to see the signs, right? Mm. But how? What should families do to keep their children away? from drugs altogether? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Give me a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. We, we, we cannot change the external, right? Remember? Drugs is not, uh, uh, um, alcohol yeah. and all this is not the problem, right? Okay. So, because because one so, of the things that, yeah. that actually I, I, I was looking at some stats, they were saying that how, um, one of the ways that children are exposed to drugs or, mm. or substance like alcohol and all that mm. is through friends. Yes. And through friends and then they see their parents consuming it like alcohol for example mm. um, so these are the key players why they sort of go into that you mm -hmm. know what I mean mm -hmm. smoking you know what I mean mm -hmm. they see the father smoking so they also mm -hmm. end up doing it right but what what should we do as, as a young parent I would like to know you know yes. how, how do I keep my child away from yes, this yeah. right yeah. Yeah. yeah coming back to what we talk about yeah. to become a full blast addict you need a combination of those two okay so you you must know the history as well, in a okay. way, and look out for this external thing. 
Okay. Yeah. So you and should. That's pay- how I plan to break the cycle. Like, there's a chance I could pass addiction to my son. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And, you know, the genetics, right? Yeah, yeah. So now, with me being in recovery, I'm praying that, praying yeah. <laughs> that I could finally break this, this generational of dysfunctional and disease. Because I'm going to teach my son recovery stuff. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's the plan. I so, don't know yet. I'm not there yet. <laughs> but, yeah. but I'll be looking out for the signs. Okay. Even from a young age, we're looking at toddler. If okay. there's any obsessiveness or, you know, certain behavior that is a bit... <laughs> okay, okay. A, a bit too obsessive. Or yeah, I'm, I w- I'm, I, I'm where I am today, I'm, I might send my son, if, he, if need to, to treatment early. Treatment early. Yes, when I say treatment, like uh, seeing a therapist, if need a child therapist, for example, if need to, mm-hmm. and do an assessment to rule out anything. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. why I'm encouraging my friends to do as well. If they, if they come to me and say, mm. "Hey, my kid is like this," I'm worried about the gaming. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of which, um, one of our youngest clients so far. Before this, we only cater to 15 and above. Mm. We had one call um, a few months back. Um, 12 year old. My goodness. Gaming. And do you know that World Health Organization has confirmed gaming as a disorder? Confirm, yeah? Wow. Yes. Gaming as a disorder. Yes. And the activity. Yeah, activity. So, so what are the symptoms of it? Like, uh, uh, like, so like gaming when, addiction. Why do do? the mother reached out yeah. is because she saw the changes in the behavior. So um, the gaming has increased. Let's say it starts with one hour and then suddenly it's three hours. Suddenly it's more, for example, uh, uh, stops communicate, communicating with the parents. Mm. Um, another reason, behavior. Because um, screen time is actually very unhealthy for yeah, children, right? Yeah, I'm sure unhealthy. you've yeah. read about that. So when you take their phone mm, gadgets away, I've what do they it. do? Tantrums, right? Tantrums, yeah. So again, don't you think they're already developing a dependent yeah. on... Screens and all that. that. Yeah. yeah, it causes them to throw that tantrum all, you know, when you're feeding yeah, them yeah, 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 yeah. to screen time, gaming or whatever. Yeah, just like in, in my home, there's no such thing. We don't allow. I mean, yeah. I, 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 because I, I've seen it in public. Mm. I, I've seen cases where I see parents with strollers and then just one iPad there and the kid is just watching that. No, and I don't mean to be a judgmental because I'm a mother now. I yeah. don't want, do not want to judge other mothers because I already know how hard it is, it is, it is. to be a parent, yeah. right? But however, I'm going to try my best to keep my son away yeah, from yeah. screen time as long as I can. They say at least the first year, two years, zero. Mm. And then after two years, um, there's limit. We're looking at about maximum of 15 minutes a day, even yeah. for us. This research done, um, maximum two hours a day, of course. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> it's a bit I, I tough to because that, yeah. we rely on our phone for yeah, a lot of things, but yeah. more or less around there. Okay. My so, goodness. I know. This is a great topic to talk great to cover. Topic. And it's, it's something, yeah, yeah, because uh, I, again, this is something that I've, I've seen in malls. And, and in fact, before you came on, we, we were talking to a teacher. Mm. Uh, I had a teacher on and we were talking and... and I was telling her how, you know, when I see the children turn like this, when they become, when they throw tantrums and all that, mm-hmm. parents may not really know what to do. It's the cost of that as well. What yeah. to do and what's the cost of what's it. What's the yeah. cost of that? And then I've, I've seen family, friends, I've seen how the marriage gets, af- gets affected because oh, you have to wow. deal with the child. It's, yeah, it's, it's a domino effect. domino effect. Yeah, and it's really sad. And all it takes is just somebody telling them what to do. That's all it takes. Mm-hmm. That's why like, we have to keep talking about this. Otherwise, we do. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. And coming back to your question as well, you, um, you know, we don't just remove. Mm. Don't mm. remove the branches. Remember, yeah. don't remove the gadget. I mean, of course, they don't. we don't want to make them feel left out, right? All their friends know how to use an iPad. Yeah. So they're like, oh, how do we yeah, yeah, use exactly, that? Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it has to be controlled. It has to be controlled. Uh, control, control. Yeah. And, and the thing is, not everyone will develop the addiction. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to prevent, maybe answering the main question, just monitor and monitor, yeah. uh, control, lah. but once I, it goes... I think at the end, what you seem to be saying is that it ha- we have to focus on all the root causes. The root causes. Uh, fantastic. Mm. I think that's a powerful thing. Mm. Yeah, you focus on the root causes and then everything will just follow. Yeah. It's for itself. And nice. sometimes the root cause could even come from family members. Family members. Like like how? Whoa. How could a family they, member they, be... They are a part of the system. Okay. So addiction is a family disease like it or not everyone mm. around them is affected okay so sometimes when we work with a client and then after doing some investigation and assessment and whatnot we discover that the family also needs some sort of support mm. in terms of some may even need counseling themselves some may be even be the enabler like you say the parent, father is drinking mm. of course the son is drinking kind of deal yeah, yeah. so and then when we encourage them to get treatment they're like hey mm. i'm not the one with the problem 
my son is. Why are you looking at me? Kind of deal. Mm-hmm. So that's the challenge that we face sometimes. Mm. Fair enough. So now, now let's let's go to recovery. Okay, let's, recovery. Let's go to the, to the uplifting part of this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Second, right? Now, I, I, again, I've, I've I've seen it on on TV a lot. Recovery, right? Um, when someone goes and enrolls themselves into these recovery centers, like what they do, mm. like what you did, what exactly takes place that allows them to come out of it? In terms of the process, oh, what sort of process, process do they go step? through? Yeah. Okay, I would say number one is assessment. First, you have to do the assessment, okay. step one. Okay. Because we need to identify what are the underlying issues. Mm. So, so I'll give you an example. Sometimes um, maybe um, we need to see if there's any mental disorders as well. Because mm-hmm. some people, they have the mental disorder, for example, anxiety or depression, and they're using the substance as a way to cope with their mental disorder. Okay. So that one, take out the addiction, you just treat. Okay. The anxiety, depression, and whatnot. But however, some people, some clients, um, they have the genetics and whatnot. They have the mental disorder. They start the addiction. Suddenly, form is a dual diagnosis. Okay. So you have to treat both. Mm. Yeah. So next to the assessment, after the assessment's done, we can come up with a treatment plan. Like at Hope Valley, we is individualized. Mm. Yeah. Every plan is different. It's specifically designed for individuals. So for one client, number one, number two may not have the same program. Okay. You know what I mean? We cater to what they need. Okay. That's um, step two. And then after that, of course, um, start the sessions. Lah. So sessions may include counselling, individual okay. counselling, uh, group therapy, um, and then uh, structure. If you are inpatient, structure is very important. This is what they teach us. These are basics. When I went to rehab, they had to teach me the basic stuff. Okay. Like drinking enough water a day, going to bed on time, waking up on time. Because using math, you know, my timing was just totally off. Yeah. You know, I'm sleeping at 7 a.m., waking mm. up at noon, for mm-hmm. example, right? Mm-hmm. So basic stuff like eating on time, going for exercise, attending your, um, your sessions and workshops and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so also working on the social part, yeah. Like how? What do you so, mean social? Um, in Hope Valley, we, we practice a bio, um, uh, the holistic okay. approach. So okay. It's whole. Okay. So it's the uh, psychological, the uh, social, emotion, and all that we cover. Okay. Okay. So we can't just focus like, you can't just go to psychiatrist, ask for medication, take medication, yay, I'm fixed. Okay. No, okay. it doesn't work. Psychiatry is only mm-hmm. one part of the whole thing. Okay. So once you're done with the psychiatry, make sure is the person is stable in terms of uh, their mental state if they have psychosis or whatnot then only you can start treatment mm. and you tackle each part relationships and trauma and you know social how they in- come, in, come back to to the society the root. yeah okay and spiritual and I spiritual, love the spiritual part. <laughs> okay like how well, what do they do on the spiritual side oh. <laughs> I never thought you were going to ask I thought we don't have time anymore no 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 I'm no. curious I really no. want to know because again my, my, my exposure and I think a lot of people's exposure to rehab it may be something that scares them but it, you know it's like I've go no, to the centre no, lock I myself have... away because again there's no exposure who knows what happens right so no everyone would say the same thing but I had the best time in my life when I was in rehab because okay. on the day I was leaving I said um, you know I, I don't care if I die tomorrow because mm. the last two months was my best time of my life can you imagine my the goodness. best time of my life was in rehab because okay. for many years it was torture out there. Mm-hmm. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, but that was just me. Not everyone would have that experience, I can okay. guarantee okay. you. Okay, okay, Yeah, the spiritual is about giving back and about um, you and God, uh, ultimately, you know? Okay. And finding your purpose and... So it seems like they really mm. dissect you and then take out whatever the and study your innards <laughs> and then they put it back. <laughs> and like that, that. Yes. Okay, very yes. interesting. <laughs> now, um, when a person completes their rehab, mm. right, and they come out, are there any things that they, are, are there, is there a regimen they should follow or things they should avoid to avoid relapsing? Very, very, very important. I'm so happy that you asked this question okay. because I'm telling you from my observation, the rate of recovery is very, very low, unfortunately. Rate of recovery? Yeah, we're looking at about 10, 20% of people stay in recovery. 80% will mm-hmm. come out and mm-hmm. relapse. Mm-hmm. Some mm-hmm. might even die and don't make it back. Some mm-hmm. will keep in and out. Okay. So, what I've discovered the um, coming out from treatment, being in treatment is easy. You're away, right? From your stresses, you're yeah. away from your delirious and mm-hmm. um, whatever, right? Your triggers. When you come out, that's the real deal right there. When you come out, you must continue with aftercare. This is why I share with all clients when they approach me, mm-hmm. the importance of aftercare and secondary treatment. So mm-hmm. don't come out into the world and like, ah, oh, I'm fixed, mm-hmm. overconfident. Mm-hmm. Guarantee you, relapse. 
So whatever you learn in treatment, for example, that structure or, you know, breathing or creating boundaries with your loved ones or, you know, kicking, start kicking people out mm -hmm. who are not are healthy, who's, yeah, definitely. you know, dealers or even sometimes family members, you may, need to have boundaries with them, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. If you don't practice this when you come out, sorry to say, you're not going to make it kind of deal. And we can only pray that your relapse does not cost you your life. Because mm. I did lose a friend. Okay. I'm yeah. oh, sorry to hear that. One relapse and that's, that's it. it. Yes. So it's very important to come out, continue with aftercare, then maintenance. In my case, one of my maintenance would be a support group support. for life. Okay, for life. For life already. <laughs> and, and, and these these avenues are available in this country? In our country. Yes. They are. We okay. have support group in Malaysia. Okay. Yeah, now with the pandemic, you can even join support group online. So you, there's no excuse not to... My goodness. But then, yeah, it's free. It's free. It's free. You can just pay by donation. You don't want to pay, it's up to you as well. But okay. the support group is are my pillars. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. I think that's a very important thing. Now, interesting that you talked about how uh, recovery is only 10, 20 percent, right, of the of the people, right? Sorry, I didn't do research. I don't know the exact amount. No, no, it's, it's fine. More it's, like fine. It's, a, it's a, it's a, it's okay. a, it's a ballpark figure. <laughs> just a disclaimer: all the statistics on this episode need to be checked. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Now, one of the things, and this is something I want to get your opinion on. Mm -hmm. um, I have a problem with the technique that is done. The, the, the whole one part of the rehab process that I have a problem with is that when you come out, as, and this is what I've seen on TV, so okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm exposed to, maybe they do things differently here. But if, if I look at in the US, what happens is say, I'm addicted to this pen. Mm. When I come out of rehab, I cannot touch this pen. I, I, I'm done with mm. this pen, right? I'm done. Now that, if you want to compare it, is sort of like uh, the the Western ideology of detachment. So I detach myself from this part of my life. I I, I cannot go back to it. And so that's why they celebrate. Oh, I, I've 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 completed this many years. I've not touched alcohol and all that kind of stuff. But the Eastern philosophy is is embraces non-attachment. So I was addicted to this pen. I understand why I was addicted to this pen. I understand the consequences of being addicted to this pen, and now I don't need this pen anymore. Mm. right mm. so the pen loses control over me and I let that old version of me die and I'm reborn again as mm. somebody new mm. somebody who is not a, 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 a slave to my emotions or my past trauma or my issues I have forgiven myself right and that's important I think a lot of people don't forgive themselves especially they yeah. should forgive themselves we all screw up we all do horrible things everyone's the same right so when, when this happens, shouldn't addicts, shouldn't the approach be that addicts in recovery should accept the consequence of their actions, accept the carnage of their habits, forgive themselves, come out, and then just move on without even considering the pen anymore? Shouldn't that be the approach as opposed to me consistently telling myself, I don't need this pen, I don't need this pen, I don't need this pen. Because then you're still your old self, right? What do you think about that? I'm going to ask back, what do you think? You obviously have done your research. What do you think? No, I think, I, I, I think, I think, uh, 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 I think we need to do better in terms of recovery, uh, helping people who are addicts. I mm. don't think, like uh, we were just talking about before this podcast, mm. how, you know, they are going to decriminalize uh, mm. addiction or drug addiction. Or, or, in fact, not, not drug addiction, but uh, the amount of substance that you have on you, right? Yes. So minor is fine. I think it's still being tabled. It's not, it's not approved yet by mm. serving table. Why I'm saying this is that if a system is f succeeding only 10 to 20% of the mm. time, that means something is wrong. Mm. We need to do better mm. because we need to ensure that the people that come out, the, the, the addicts who are recovered, who are now new individuals, we need to protect them. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so that is why I'm saying, uh, I mean, in your, because you have gone through rehab and all that, you seem to be somebody who has purpose in your life. Right, and I think purpose is a very powerful thing, in order to ensure that uh, we stay away. I give you one example. Uh, many years back, before the pandemic, I decided to do a pilgrimage to India. Now, before that, of course, I I I I, I was a social drinker and all that, like maybe two times a week or once a week and all that. Now the problem is, uh, when you do this pilgrimage, you have to do a forty-one day fast. Otherwise, you can't go. Right, so you have to stop alcohol, cigarettes, women sleep on the floor, don't rest. I mean, it's, it's very, it's a tough 41 days. But the thing is, what was amazing was on the eve of the start of that 41 day, I called my friends and said, look, let's go, let's have a few drinks and, and then I'm done. What I was surprised was the next day for that next 41 days, I didn't have a single craving for alcohol, for cigarettes, nothing. 
I felt amazing, by the way. Uh, after the twenty day, wow, you feel like powerful, right? But then I think now when I look back, I think that maybe it was because I had purpose that I I I, I yes. I'm moving to something here. I want to do this pilgrimage. I want to test my body, test my resolve, and do it. And that made it took away all the need for this. Yes. Same thing like you, mm. like you are helping people. You are you 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 have programs. You are doing things. You have purpose. Mm-hmm. That purpose mm-hmm. drives you, right? Yes. So sh- shouldn't we help them find their purpose? Of course, that's what you do in treatment. Oh, you do that as well. So you, okay. You, you you don't just remove the substance and say, okay, good luck, all the best to you. You no. remove it and then you help them find their purpose or okay. help them find something they can be passionate about, whether mm. it's hobbies, whether mm. it's you know doing charity mm. work and so on. Okay. Yeah, so I love that you asked that question. Okay. Yeah, so that is that support. You need to replace it. If not, the person is going to come out a dry drunk. A dry drunk meaning they're not drinking, but emotionally they're still like a drunk. Still the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah still the same, right? They, they, oh, even they worse, perhaps, because there's no alcohol that is making yeah. them calm. Correct. Up, Correct. You yeah. Know? And and I've I've seen in a in a in a in a television show, uh, a House MD. I'm a big fan of that show. And so one of the things they mentioned in that show was that uh, they they always recommend addicts to not go back to their place of where they lived yeah. when they got when when oh, they were the substance abuse, okay. right? Is that true? And um, depends, yeah. Like for me, I I wanted to move out. You wanted yeah, to move out because it was change. very hard. Just packing alone, I was crying because there was a few occasion where I found uh, the plastic bag of um, my meth, oh. and it was very triggering. Like personally, but again, that is not the main solution. Like you, like a lot of people, this is what they'll do. They cannot stop, right? Yeah. What they do is they they change countries. Okay, maybe if I start a life here, they change the environment. Yeah, uh, that's like cutting the branches and not fixing the root. The root, yeah. Okay. So it helps, especially early stage. Okay. So early stage, change phone number if you have to block your dealer's number. You have to block your friends who you used to go drinking with. Yeah. You know, and if you have to move home, do basically do whatever it takes mm. for your recovery. Because mm. if you don't, you're gonna lose everything else. Some yeah. people, oh, I can't go because of my work. Forget your work right now. Because mm. if you don't get recovery now, you're going to lose your work. I guarantee you. It's yeah. just a, a matter of time. So things like that, yeah. Okay, interesting. <laughs> now, like we talked about before, mm-hmm. um, I don't know whether you want to touch this, but we were talking about the, the whole decriminalizing of possession, uh, small amounts of drugs, and of course, suicide. Now, Malaysia and Singapore has been notorious for doubling down on drug abuse. I mean, we 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 are quite tough on drug addicts. Yeah. We, you know, even even her owning substance. I think Lee Kuan Yew even it was an old video of him in an interview where he said he was not unapologetic about that stance. Right yeah. now, we had recently a, a professor from University of Tarim Malaysia who said that rehabilitation is the better option than incarceration. What do you think should be the approach of the government or what kind of reforms you would like to see in order for us to curb this issue mm. from the legal part, from mm. the, you know, on, 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 on a law level. Mm. Yeah. My hope for the government, I have three things. Okay, yeah, number please. one, of course. If you're listening to this, PMX. <laughs> please. <laughs> please do this. <laughs> number one, of course, decriminalize addiction, meaning yeah. treat the disease as it should. Mm. So send them for treatment, mm. not punish them. Mm. But no doubt, if they are involved in criminal acts, yes, that one, no question asked. Mm-hmm. Of course, you have to treat that, mm. that accordingly. But yeah treat the person. Don't send them to jail alone. It's, it's not going to work. Kind it's of. not going to work. Yeah, right? yeah, They're yeah. going to come out, they might use again yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Number two, um, again, make more noise on addiction. Mm. Have throw all these workshops in schools and whatnot. More people need to be educated on this yeah. matter, like yeah. what we're sharing today. Yeah. So do you have better understanding today after our chat? Yes, like yes, you feel yes, like yes, yes. You I have f- more empathy for <laughs> No, I do, I do, I do, yeah. I do, I do, I do. Yeah. Maybe I not you, but you know, if yeah. others, like you feel like others like who's has so much, you know, who's against drugs, for example, yes. after they listen to this, you feel there's at least a bit of yeah, understanding yeah, yeah, and empathy yeah, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah? Perhaps, yeah. Okay, and number three, I w- uh, w- it would be nice to, for them to push for more people to work in this field because we definitely don't have enough professionals. We don't have enough people. We definitely don't have enough professionals in the fields. Okay. If you had given me more time, I would have given you the percentage for this because they, oh, they've done me, the research. Tell me, why not? Um, we just don't have enough. So because like I, I was mentioning to you about Hope Valley earlier, right? Before we started the interview, uh, this conversation. Yeah. Um, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, no before we started this conversation, where was I? About the um, number of people working. You're talking about... Uh, uh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because one... A uh, professional, a uh, counselor of uh, therapists, for example, they can only take a certain number of clients. Okay. It's unethical to take more because you'll be overworked and then you're not giving your best to your clients. Yeah. So right now, we, 
uh, I think uh, Rotary Club, I think it was one of their events where they have they found that research. There's a percentage of the number of people who need treatment and professional mm-hmm. in this field. Not at par. At par. <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm just curious about one more, one more thing. Um, you are a recovery coach and mm-hmm. you, you assist people who are going through, you know, dark points mm-hmm. in their life and all that, right? It must be tough on you as well, right? To listen to these stories and to help people doesn't, I mean, are you affected by that? No, uh, I how? can't. As a professional, I have to learn to detach. If not, I'm not going to last in this field. Okay. Yeah, you're talking about getting their energy. Yeah, right? yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. I have to learn to detach. It is, yeah, the, I have, okay. I, I can't say completely no. There are some cases where I come home, I'll be in the car just falling up. Okay. I'll be crying because it was, some cases can be really, really overwhelming. You okay. Know? Um, that's why we professionals, we need our own therapies, our yeah, own supervisor yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. We need a way to unload as well. Of course, yes, self-care has to come first. So, okay. I have to. So how, how do you detach yourself? <laughs> I'm curious. I'm, I've, I've always I was just I've, reading this today on Instagram. Um, when you are sucking another person's energy, well, I hope that word is okay. It's taking, fine, it's when fine. you're taking another person's energy, you are actually, it's, it's not because you so much as uh, you're caring for the person, it's more of a trauma response. So I, I also want to investigate what this more. Okay, okay. Detachment is very important. This is something we learn in Ethics 101 kind of deal. Like okay. you cannot have this transference thing between you and the clients. I'm yes. just curious. But also. we can have empathy, of course. We're yeah. in this field. Yeah, yeah. But we cannot, when they're happy, we cannot be happy. They're sad, we're sad. We cannot have that attach, that sort of uh, dependency yeah, or dependency. whatever. That's, yeah. that's already not healthy. Okay. We have to learn to detach. Okay. So on certain hard cases, then after the session, I have my quiet moment, do my meditation, go uh, for massage or whatever. I need a way to, what's to relax, the word? To, yeah, to, sort of, uh, to release as yeah, well. Yeah. So, you know. To deflate. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I don't take it personal anymore. Thank God. Because, yeah, yeah, no stories will make me, <gasps> no more already. Because yeah. you've heard, yeah, I've heard enough <laughs> to okay. make me like, Hmm, okay, you know. <laughs> when when you hear these issues in Malaysia, hmm. what are the what are the most frequent uh, uh, reasons why people say that they 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 dive into substance abuse? The main reason. Yeah, the most common. Common reason. Based on your experience working. My with experience. Um, um, I said bullying could play a part. Bullying is that? Uh, family neglect, um, hmm. and abuse. You know, abuse. Yeah. When, when you talk about family neglect, um, of course, when when I when I when I was watching your videos and watching mm. interviews, I I I I, I sympathized with your mother. I'm sure you also mm. did, oh, right? Uh, you look so beautiful, by the way. Very beautiful lady. <laughs> Thank you. Very she old is. school with that hair. Reminds right? <laughs> you of my auntie. Um, God bless her soul. <laughs> yeah, and um, but I mean, uh, this could be a harsh thing, but I think people need to hear it as well. Um, is while we do sympathize with the families of mm. addicts, mm. right? Should they also take a bit of the blame? Who uh, take the pain? The fa- no, no. Uh, as in, if we, if since I mean, we we, we automatically it- sympathize with the families, right? We don't really focus on the addict itself. We usually, when we hear, say, "Oh, pity you," you know, you must be going through a tough time as a mother, as a father, you know, you know, and all that. But instead, should we also maybe point a finger to the family and say, "This also is because of something you did." Should we do that? The, the pointy finger sounds a bit harsh, harsh but, but, but okay. they should like, take some of the blame not it's not a blaming thing it's that's why we need to do the assessment sometimes we have like interviews with the family okay, also because okay. there's a high chance that the dysfunctional actually came from them and may, it's not even their fault they come from generational mm. of dysfunctional god knows how many <laughs> generations ago kind uh, of deal you know so when i came out it's like i'm seeing the world in a new pair of glasses like mm. <gasps> You know, you, you, you know, I was finding when I talk to you, <laughs> yeah. I the, the thought, the sentence that keeps ringing in my head yeah. is just how important family is. Very important. Yeah, there's like your life support in a way, but depends on family as well. Yeah. There's some, if family is dysfunctional and this person is trying to recover and family don't want uh. and it's not helping this person's recovery. Oh, there is stuff like that as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't decide that. Only the clients can decide that themselves. Okay, yeah. okay. My Whatever it takes, right? Whatever, Whatever it, it takes. takes. Whatever yeah. it takes, yeah. Now, I want to ask you this, uh, since we've come to the end of this conversation. Um, I, I worry for the future. When you tell me that 65% in three of the drug addicts were mm. from the youth, uh, that, that, that worries me. What's, mm. I'm thinking myself, what's happening? What are we doing yeah. wrong, right? Now, 
what would you tell a boy or a girl in school uh, you know young maybe 14 in fact most of these cases also between 13 to 19 they're already having their first taste of uh, substances and mm. all that mm. what would you tell them in order to for them to rethink their decision mm. to try these substances what would you say i know what i would not say okay what would you not say then uh, just say no <laughs> cuz that can fit is yeah sorry is bs okay yeah 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 it's not as easy as just say, drug some your way okay no thank you no, it's not as easy as yes, that yes yes yeah oh give me a moment yeah. <laughs> let me think what about this say? what would i say to a kid What was the question? Again? No, no. <laughs> like, like my I, suggestion, like but, yeah, um, like because I'm I'm seeing in my mind like I'm seeing a child, a, a kid. When I say child, I mean a, okay. Can I just say something? Uh, when I work with the twenty year olds, yeah. I find them very fascinating. Yeah, okay? sure, sure. It's always um uh, when they when they talk to us or me or any one of my team members, right? Um, they feel comforted because they're not being heard at home. Mm. Something as simple as that. They're not being heard at they're home. They're not being heard. Something as simple as that. You know what I mean? Mm. Does, does that make it makes sense, right? It makes a lot of sense. So they're not able to turn to their own family. Or there's nothing wrong with the family again. Mm. Maybe the way the family react when they try and speak to their family. Mm. Yeah. So they automatically shut down. Like, oh, I cannot share this with mom because mom is gonna like nag at me. Mom is gonna judge me. Mom is gonna tell me what to do instead of hearing me. Mm. Especially teenagers, you're supposed to be your, their friend at that age. Not so much teaching them anymore. Yeah, I, I yeah. love this thing that I found out. Um, one to seven, you play with them. Seven to fourteen, you teach them. Because this is the age they ask a lot of questions, yes, right? Enjoy yes. it, man. Fourteen to twenty-one, be their friend. Because okay. a lot of parents who still want to teach them at fourteen to twenty-one, forget it, man. At that age, they know what they want already. They, 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 they think they know everything yeah, kind yeah. of deal. So I my, was pretty much like that. Yes, <laughs> me yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it makes sense. Like, oh, this makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, with my other children, I have five other beautiful <laughs> stuff children. Nice. I, uh, um, I, my parenting style is I, I don't like to force onto them okay. what they do not want to do. Okay. So it. They are good children. I don't think they they'll be into exposed to this kind of things. But yeah. if I were to have a child who were to come up to me and then I want to try weed, for example, mm. I cannot. I would not stop my child as much as I'm going to lock you up and put you in my lock you in the room and not let you out. I am going to give them um, options like, oh, okay, you this is your life. You you can make your own decision. However. Mm. If you choose this path, these are the consequences. Mm. And if you know, give them the reasons and let them decide themselves. And if you get into trouble, okay, I know it's easier said than done. No, I don't no, know. No, this is saying, my I, aim. Yeah, this I'm is what I want. I want to learn. Yeah, this is what I hope I can do. Um, I'm not going to save you because you've chosen to take this path. So mm. there'll be consequences. Don't expect me to bail you out of jail. Kind of deal. If you have to say jail, touch wood, ah, no, it's a bit of a mistake. At five, uh, five days, you have to pay the consequences. I am going to try my best not to rescue because that's how I've lived my life with my beautiful mother. She rescued me, so there was never consequences. Anything, mom, help me, rescue me, save me. So there was no fear, right? So I do whatever because mom will always be there mm. to clean out whatever mess I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like the story of uh, I think it was Robert Downey Jr. I think. Whose uh, <laughs> father called the cops on him when he was tough uh, yeah, yeah tough love yeah. But sometimes we need to because we don't want to be the uh, parents who enable. Because I trust me, some parents will go out and buy the substance for their love. Their cases like why that. would they do that? Because they don't want their loved ones to not have money to go out and get caught. Oh so okay. So they okay. are willing. My goodness. To that stage. So that you can see that it's functional. You can see what it means by addiction is a family disease. Everyone's affected, whether you like it or not. Kind mm. of deal. Yeah, Malaysia got overseas. Yeah, of course. Of course yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the parents, the family, go and buy yes. the substance. Yes. I uh, got a lot more stories on families, man. Call me again for another episode. No, I'm kidding. My goodness. <laughs> can you share one more? I'm so curious. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, because I I love working with families. They're actually okay. my favorite part. Okay. Um. They, we call it the co-addiction. This okay. falls under the those. So um, there are cases where, um, um, let's say, the husband is a sex addict. Okay. Okay. Husband has got well, caught already. Uh. So now supposed to be in treatment kind of deal. Uh. So I have to travel for work. Uh. So wife will say, um, keep leave your phone on so that I can see that you're not sleeping with a prostitute or whatever. Okay. He's in a different country. She stay awake all night 
is staring at the video to make sure the husband does not. So you see wow. how crazy is that? Like you've lost your life. Your new drug is your loved one who's using the substance. Yeah. That's your new drug right there. Yeah. And I have another family as well who installed cameras in the house. Not for burglars, not for anyone outsiders. It's, the camera is meant for the sun. Because in case the sun will all dealers come over. You know, that, that kind of deal. But they're not at fault, you see. When you're a family, you, you, you know, you don't know what to do in situations like that. You just, yeah. yeah it's, it's like that. There's a movie that uh, I watched, which I truly, un- I, I got a better understanding of, uh, they call it uh, nymphomaniac, mm. the sex addict, right? Mm. So, I, you know, when you're a kid and you hear sex addict, you think of it in a very, uh, I mean, you, you, you sort of relate it to more like pornographic videos yes. that you have seen, like, you know, you're having sex, yeah. having fun. Yeah. But this movie was made by a nymphomaniac. Mm. A recovery, a recovery, and this is she. He, I think it's a she. I think she wrote it. She actually directed it, and it's dark. It's dark. It starts mm. off a bit fun, where the girls are. It's a woman who's an infomaniac sleeps around, and then just the destruction it brings. My goodness, it's tough. It's tough. It's like any substances, right? Yeah, man, that's a heavy topic. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I would love to have you on and talk about this again, <laughs> maybe in a two, three weeks time. Let me oh, heal. <laughs> No, but thank you so much, uh, Ika, for coming on. And and, uh, congrats on all the work that you've been doing. Thank you. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you, how can they do so? Yes, uh, you can look for us at um, on Instagram or at our website, hopevalley.my. Hopevalley.my, that's it's right. O-P-E-V-A-L-L-E-Y. Yes. Was it inspired by Mind Valley? Any, any uh, connection? No. no? <laughs> I only realized that like a year later. Oh, like, oh no, okay. it's so close to Mind Valley. Really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so thank you again. And for all of you all who have any questions, you guys want to share your story or maybe you want to get in touch with and get some professional help or get some support, please drop us a message. Or you can visit their website directly, hopevalley.my. Uh, I'm sure Ika would love to help and guide you on the right path. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, thank you for making the trip and thank you for to, uh, answering my request to come on. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you so much thank, for having me. Thank uh, you. And Sam. thank you so much for talking about addiction. Uh, yeah, we need to talk more about You're it. making a difference. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you so much. And to all of you all, please like, share, subscribe as always. Share your comments, share your thoughts and let's keep the conversation going. Take care till next time. Bye.